Good evening, everybody. I will call to order our regular city council meeting held virtually via WebEx of June 23rd, 2020. Um, the first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you could please all put your camera on and unmute your microphones and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Thank you. Yeah. Next item is the open forum. Is anybody here? Did we get any um, calls or emails for the open forum? Uh, Mayor, we did not receive any calls or um, emails for the open forum, but just as a reminder, residents can submit emails to myself, Kelly Wynn at kwynn at richfieldmn.gov, or you can call my office phone at 612-861-9711. Thank you. Um, seeing that nobody's here for the open forum, we will move to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes of the Special City Council and Staff Work Session of May 20th, 2020. The Special City Council and Staff Work Session of June 10th, 2020. The City Council Meeting of June 9th, 2020. And the City Council Closed Session of June 17th, 2020. Um, and before a motion is made, I do just want to pass it on to City Attorney Tejan to um, make a small uh, update on that approval of the minutes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just have a quick comment regarding the minutes for the closed meeting that was held on June 17th, 2020. That was a meeting held in a closed session with the City Council, City Manager, and City Attorney. Um, and defense counsel relating to pending litigation. Um, I need to make a slight revision to the minutes just to note the case that's involved um, with that closed session. Um, so before, with, with any motion for approval, I would just ask that that be conditioned upon the noted change by the city attorney. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you like to make a motion, Council Member Supple, or ask a question? I was just going to approve that the minutes would be noted change that um, Attorney T.J. mentioned. Council Member Whalen, second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Um, Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The minutes have been approved. And I do just want to make a note. I did make this note at our work session, but I'll make it again at the council meeting. Um, council member Troutman will not be with us tonight. So there are just four of us. So the next item I'm so excited to do, it's the Mark, Dr. Mark Jenkins proclamation. And we have Mark Jenkins here, a proud Richfield resident that we are celebrating. And not only are we going to do a proclamation, we're going to give him the key to the city and hear a little bit more um, from Dr. Jenkins about his amazing work. So I have, um, the, our staff has the actual proclamation and the key to the city, and we will make sure there's the key, if everyone can see, um, Kelly's holding it up. And then we will get you a very nice proclamation. I just have a printed out copy here to read online now, um, but we will be giving you the, this great proclamation and the key to the city. Um, when you're able to, to meet us up, uh, meet up with us at City Hall. And then after I read the proclamation, um, I will ask Kelly to just read what's on the little plaque with the key to the city. And then we'll ask um, Dr. Jenkins to just say a few words as well. So the proclamation reads, we hereby pay honor to and celebrate the scientific career achievements of Uni University of Minnesota immunologist, Dr. Mark Jenkins, and 
Whereas Dr. Jenkins was elected to the National Academy of Sciences on April 27th for his revolutionary work in immunology, the National Academy of Sciences has approximately 2,400 members and 50 foreign associates. Founded in 1863, the Academy is charged with providing independent, objective advice to the, na to the nation on matters related to science and technology. Current and former members of the Academy include Albert Einstein, Jonas Salk, Stephen Hawking, and Noam Chomsky. And whereas recently Dr. Jenkins has been leading the University of Minnesota's work to develop an antibody test for SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. His team researched, tested, and helped administer clinical trials of the test that aim to determine a person's immunity to the novel coronavirus. And whereas Dr. Jenkins, a director of the Center of Immunology, a regents and a distinguished McKnight professor in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the University of Minnesota Medical School. And whereas Dr. Jenkins has been an integral part in mentoring the next generation of immunologists, he sees them as his legacy in his professional field. His efforts provide guidance and expertise when necessary to his colleagues in the, in the field which led him to receiving the American Association of Immunologists Mentoring Award. And whereas besides Dr. Jenkins demanding work in the field of immunology, he has also been a very active member in building a stronger, more cohesive Richfield community. Dr. Jenkins served as a member of the Richfield School Board from 2004 to 2008. And whereas Dr. Jenkins is known throughout the world for his work on the adaptive immune system, which protects humans and other vertebrates from subsequent interactions with pathogens that may cause them harm. Now, therefore, I, Maria Regan Gonzalez, mayor of the city of Richfield, do hereby award Dr. Mark Jenkins the symbolic key to the city for his accomplishments and contributions to Richfield and the world, proclaimed this 23rd day of June, 2020. So we could just give a little clap for Dr. Jenkins. Yay! <laughs> We're very proud of you, Dr. Jenkins. And I'm wondering if you could please take a moment to read what's on the plaque with the key. Of course. So it says here, the key to the city of Richfield presented to Dr. Mark Jenkins <clears throat> in recognition for your induction into the National Academy of Science on April 27th, 2020, and for your revolu revolutionary work in immunology on behalf of the mayor and city council. We're very honored to be able to virtually present this to you tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, and I know um, council members have things that they'll wanna share, and I know that there's family members on the line, but I wanna pass it to Dr. Jenkins to just share a little bit about um, how it's been to receive this amazing award and recognition. Well, uh, I'd like to start by thanking uh, the mayor and uh, city council members for uh, this proclamation uh, and the, the key to the city. Uh, one, of my bro one, of my, one of my brothers learned uh, that I was getting the key to the city. He wanted to know if it would open the high school gym so that we could shoot baskets at midnight. But um, I told him <laughs> it's probably not that kind of key. But um, I, I'm, I'm very proud to have uh, been elected to the National Academy. This is a dream come true for any scientist. Um, it's been a long time coming uh, to a University of Minnesota Medical School faculty member over 50 years. And so, uh, of course, I'm thrilled. And, um, and I'm proud to be recognized by the, the council. Uh, I'm a very proud resident of Richfield. My wife, Karen, and I have lived here for 32 years. Our uh, children, Scott, Lauren, Denise, all graduated from Richfield High. They've all bought homes. They uh, they live here in Richfield. We're we're basically buying up the place, and um, so and I I tell all my colleagues I, I'm I'm proud to be from uh, this great uh, town of Richfield. Four by two, as Barb Devlin used to say, uh, but a, a great place to live. And um, again, thank you very much for. Um, for this recognition. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Dr. Jenkins. Any comments or questions for Dr. Jenkins from our city council members? Yes, I wanted to say a, a couple of words. Can okay, you hear me? Council member Garcia, yep, we can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say that Dr. Jenkins is a modern day hero. Boy, do we need you and, and, some, and the work that you've done. You have really not only stood out, you know, in terms of getting this incredible and significant recognition, but you all have also have also worked on on on, on the COVID-19. And I know that the the Bolivia women voters did tape the portion of of your presentation, and you can find it on YouTube. So I just wanted to say it's just wonderful. I just I couldn't be prouder of you, and you deserve all the recognition. And uh, and I just and I wanted to say to Karen, Karen, the, the woman behind the man, good job. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Councilmember Garcia. That means a lot to me. You're kind of you're one of my heroes, one of the pillars of the community. So uh, that that means a lot. Thank you very much. You bet. Any other comments or questions from council members? Council member Supple. First of all, congratulations and thank you so much for all that you've done for the community over the years, Dr. Jenkins. This is an incredible honor and very well deserved. And as I was listening to the mayor read the proclamation and it talked about how you were a mentor, I thought that really fit because You've kind of worked behind the scenes to help pass referendums for the schools. You've been a coach for team for youth sports. You've been on the school board. And it just fit that you're always working for the youth. And now you're a role model because, as Alan Aldous said, that scientists are professional curiosity machines. And we need our youth to be professional curiosity machines. And we need more scientists. And so, again, you're being a role model for everybody else. So. Thank you so much, and thank you for all you've done for our community. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mary. That, that means a lot. I know I enjoyed working with you on CQC and the referendum days, and I know we're both proud of what we accomplished for the Richfield schools. And I would really, um, I'll put this out there. I put it out there before, but I'm, I'm more, than, more than ready to help Richfield kids who are interested in science, uh, open doors for them, come to my lab. I can help them make connections, and um, and I uh, many ritual students have taken me up on that over the years, and uh, and I'll continue to do that as long as I can. Thank you so much, Councilmember Whalen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'll just echo the many congratulations. This is a really prestigious award and a really big deal. Uh, and you're a really big deal. And so it's exciting to um, to claim you as a Richfield resident and uh, sort of uh, bask in your glow a bit. Um, but so thank you for the work you're doing. Um, obviously, the important medical scientific work around COVID, um, but also just for, for all the work you've done for our community over the years. Um, just thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Council Member Whalen. Appreciate that. And I'll just keep keep layering on the compliments and I'll just echo the congratulations to you and your family for this um, amazing achievement and just, you know, I actually was reading about you online in several different places and there's just so many achievements that that you've attained and um, I think the most important thing is you're just a living breathing example of someone who just loves the community loves to share knowledge um, and it's it's about the greater good, whether it's here in Richfield for our youth, whether it's um, just your involvement in raising your kids in this community and growing that sense of community and being that community builder, as Councilmember Garcia always talks about the community builders, that's definitely who you are, um, or whether it's inspiring, you know, young scientists, that's huge. So. Um, it's just an honor to, as our council members said, get to be a part of that. And hopefully, you know, you continue to inspire other Richfield residents to take that same path because we need so many community builders like yourself. Um, so 
it's an honor and we're excited to continue supporting you in your work. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm proud to be from Richfield and um, I want to, you know, the, some of our neighbors to the west get a lot of publicity. And so I like to see uh, um, Richfield do well. So I'm going to keep, keep at that. <laughs> Absolutely. Any last comments before we close this part of the agenda? Well, I, I think for one thing, I'm sure that the um, communications director is is uh, submitting uh, this information to the Richfield Sun, but I hope he also is submitting it to the to the uh, Star and Tribune because you know, I mean, I I would I just think it's just such a beautiful beautiful. Uh, uh, you know, um, recognition, and I know that you've done the University of Minnesota proud. So we want to, we want to also, um, you know, share share uh, your your goodness with uh, with other people. Thank you again. Great. Well, thank you to the friends and family members who tuned in. Um, and thank you, Dr. Jenkins. And we will see you soon. Take a couple pictures with you and to give you your proclamation. So thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. Thank you and for your work for the city. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Councilmember Whalen, so moved. Garcia, second. The motion to approve the agenda has been made by Council Member Whalen and seconded by Council Member Garcia. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Sapo. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The agenda has been approved. The next item is our consent calendar, and that will be with City Manager Rodriguez. Thank you, Mayor. The consent calendar contains several separate items, which are acted upon by the City Council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, the individual items and recommended actions have also been approved. No further council action on these items is necessary. On tonight's consent calendar, item A, consider the approval of the City of Richfield's Excel Energy Partners in energy application submission. Item B, continue the public hearing to consider the platting and vacation of easements at 6228 Penn Avenue South and 6200 Queen Avenue South, Lunds and Byerleys to July 14th, 2020. Item C, consider the approval of, first, of the first reading of a transitory ordinance vacating a right of way easement on the property at 6228 Penn Avenue South, Lunds, and schedule a public hearing and second reading for July 14th, 2020. I submit these items for your consideration as part of the consent calendar. Garcia moves uh, approval of the consent calendar. So full second. Consent calendar has been moved by Council Member Garcia and seconded by Council Member Supple. Are there any Council Member questions or discussion on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask Analyst Martinez Govinia to please take the roll call vote. Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Council Member Supple. Aye. Council Member Trotman. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The consent calendar has been approved. The next item, item number five, will go to Council Member Supple. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This item is consideration of the approval of a resolution authorizing the lawful gambling premises permit by firefighters for healing to conduct lawful gambling at Sandy's Tavern, 6612 Penn Avenue South. On May 12, 2020, the city received an application for a premises permit to be submitted to the Minnesota State Gambling Control Board by Firefighters for Healing to conduct lawful gambling at Sandy's Tavern, 6612 Penn Avenue South. Firefighters for Healing, otherwise known as FFH, is a nonprofit organization founded in 2010. 
FFH's goals are to support burn survivors and their families, as well as firefighters and first responders injured in the line of duty and in need of therapy. FFH plan to use the proceeds from their lawful gambling activities to support the operational expense of their current transitional housing apartment facilities and the designated transitional housing care center currently being developed and planned for completion in 2021. The public safety director has reviewed the background information and documents and approves of its contents and sees no basis for denial. Um, I don't know if staff wanted to add anything to that. Mayor, Council Members, this is Jennifer Anderson. I am sorry I don't have a camera on my uh, computer tonight, but um, I, I, at this point, I don't have anything to add. Um, I'm happy to answer questions um, if there are any. Is Mr. Johnson there? Y yes, I'm Johnson? Here. Yes, I am here. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I wanted to ask, uh, this is the Garcia. I wanted to ask, um, you know, um, in order of, now you're building a new building in Minneapolis, I understand, right? Correct. It's uh, being being developed currently across the street from HCMC, the burn unit, and it will be connected to the uh, Skyway as well. And we will have the, the plan is to have about 13 apartments on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I wanted, uh, and um, what, what, what are the benefits for besides increasing uh, increasing patronage? What are the benefits for Sandy's to do this? I mean, do they get any part of the pro of the profits, or how do you handle that? Yeah, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, we we pay them um, on a monthly basis as part. We share our, the proceeds essentially um, for for many of the money that that's made. They receive they will receive some back as, in the form of rent, but it it's not capped. So um, the potential there, we're working a very good partnership with Maddie O'Reilly, who's the owner there. And he's he actually approached us. He was very excited about um, supporting the mission that we have. Um, currently, we have four apartments that, and we, we pay those completely. So the people who stay at the apartments or people that stay at the transitional care center when that's open, don't pay anything. So if they're coming from Northern Minnesota or they're coming from Richfield, or they're coming from wherever they might be and they need a place to stay across the street from HCMC or their family needs a place because their loved one is in the burn unit. Um, right now, we're the only ones that have uh, those units available and we make those available at, at free of charge. And so the plan for this is to really support statewide and, and even uh, the surrounding states as well to be able to have a place where uh, burn victims or their, um, their their, their relatives, or in many cases, um, firefighters uh, themselves need a place to come for therapy. I was a 21 year firefighter myself. Jake is, uh, was the reason that the organization was founded. He was uh, uh, injured as a Minneapolis firefighter. Um, and I think we would try and reach out to uh, the state. Um, in fact, I, I'm on several committees where I get a chance to work with uh, your fire chief um, uh, very re regularly on a number of things, a no number of issues. So. We, we, we extend the work and uh, to answer the question specifically about Sandy's, that's what Maddie was really all about you know, trying to, uh, to help support is, is our reach to so many different people and different populations. Now you have, there's four components here. One is the, the paper pull tabs and electronic tabs. The other one is bingo and electronic bingo. And then the third is paddle wheel. And then the fourth one, Tip board. Explain how tip board works. Uh, sure, and and I, I'll tell you, the tip board probably will not be something that that we will do um, when we fill up for the state. It's to our benefit to check that we might be considering to do all of those. But um, at Sandy's Tavern, we'll go in with um, uh, a, a vending machine initially and, and electronic pull tabs. A paddle paddle wheel is essentially uh, a very large uh, wheel that. Uh, uh, you, you sell individual tickets for uh, the numbers that are on the board and then you spin the wheel. Um, it's fairly complicated and it actually takes a lot of extra work. So one of the things that Maddie did want to focus on was bingo because he's trying to build a very good, strong community around Sandy's Tavern. And 
uh, we want to help support that. So bingo would be one of the uh, uh, one of the eventual programs that we could uh, offer. Um, initially, however, we'd be doing a vending machine. And if there's time, if there's room, and uh, and the facility would allow, we uh, you know we, we could expand to have actually a a pull tab booth there. But um, we've seen a lot of success with um, vending machine and uh, and electronic tabs. And from a from a money back to the organization and back to the city, um, that's really the the best source of, uh, of revenue back. Well, I'll say one thing. I think Catholics will appreciate bingo. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to running it for it. Believe me. Yeah, Maddie's very excited about it. You know, the, the one thing that that I think this is to me a policy issue. Um, you know, I, I've seen your website and, and it looks really, really good and all that. And uh, I, I don't know anyone on your on your uh, board of directors, but I wanted to, I wanted to ask this question to other council members or, or, or you know, I want to know if we start doing this, because right now we only have the two service clubs of the FW and American Legion, they're currently closed and um, Frenchman's and Frenchman's is is doing this for um, uh, for the Lions Club. Um, what's what's to prevent us from having a bunch of uh, nonprofits coming in and wanting to to set up a deal like this? Anybody thought about it? This is Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Um, I, I'm actually wondering if we can discuss that also with Jennifer Anderson on our staff. Um, so I don't know if you're able, Jennifer, to explain kind of what the permitting process looks like, what kind of leverage the city of Richfield has, knowing that these are um, these permits are controlled by the state. And um, if if for whatever reason, and, and I don't even know what type of issues could be brought to be uh, with these type of permits, what what type of concerns might people have that could warrant a review of these permits? So I um, I don't know if you have any answers to those type of questions. Going back to what Council Member Garcia has asked the council. Yeah, good question. So um, gambling permits can be issued to. Um, uh, licensed on sale liquor establishments uh, or establishments holding a club license. So, as you mentioned, you know, it's the American Legion, it's the VFW. On sale liquor establishments, you know, we've got, um, we've got 10 uh, licensed in the community. Uh, we can issue up to 15. But when you look at some of those establishments, um, and kind of what their goal is in terms of the atmosphere that they provide and um, their their food offerings, um, you know. I and this is just my this is just my personal kind of guesstimation. But you know, when you go to Lynn 65, you're going there for a good dinner and maybe you know to hang with some friends and be on the patio. Um, you know, if you're going to Khan's Mongolian Barbecue, I you know I don't see them setting up. Um, you know, gambling situation within their their uh, location. Giordano's is a is a family style pizza restaurant. Um, they don't have a really big bar. Um, you know, I don't see I don't see that fitting in with them. Um, and so, you know, those those establishments could ask to have gambling within their establishment, but I just don't. It just doesn't kind of fit their their. Um, you know, their atmosphere and, and their dining experience. Um, you know, the with the establishments that we do have that are providing, you know, pull tabs and things like that, um, you know, calls for service because of, of gambling. Um, you know, I checked with the chief is, is pretty non-existent. It's it's always usually for other things like, you know, disturbances or, or theft or, um, you know, any any number of, of different things that could could happen, um, and so you know, I th that's just my take on on uh, you know kind of our our landscape in Richfield. You know, I've been here almost three years. This is the first uh, gambling application that we've processed through. Um, 
you know, the, the Legion and the VFW have had theirs for, for many years. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't see a rush of, of applications coming in. Um, so. Well, I just, you know, Jennifer, it's just like I told you earlier today, you know, um, I don't, I don't want to make it to the point where, you know, that we set a precedence and that, that we can't say no to people after we've set a precedence. So those are my concerns. I'm just, um, you know, I, I have, um, I have, you know, I, I, I think it's a, it's an organization that, that is needed and I don't have anything against the organization. I'm just talking, to, uh, I'm seeing this as just a policy issue. Yeah, and maybe, maybe this is an issue, you know, perhaps city attorney Teachin could, you know, is there, is there, um, potentially the option of putting a cap on the number of gambling licenses offered in the city like we do with, um, you know, liquor licenses, and maybe we cap it at four. Um, and as as people or as establishments, you know, as they might not renew, um, you know, that would drop the number of, of active licenses in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Mayor and Council, um, that's certainly something I can look into. I'm not aware of anything right now off the top of my head that would um, allow for a capping of those licenses. I know these are approved by the state and then before a permit can be issued, the um, local unit of government needs to give approval and consent. Um, I'm just not, I don't have that answer right now as to whether you could set a limit on the number. But if that's something that the council is interested in knowing, I can certainly check into that and talk further with um, Jennifer about that issue. So could council members weigh in? We have a couple um, items on the table to discuss. So one is, are people interested in hearing more um, in the future from Jennifer and um, city attorney Tijin on if we have the possibility of limiting the amount of, of these permits that we have in our city? I also know um, council member Garcia asked us what we think as policymakers of how many um, how many establishments we feel would be okay in our approach to gambling permits in general to the city. But then also do council members have any additional questions for firefighters for healing for Jennifer Anderson um, or discussion points that they wanna bring up in addition. Council member Whelan. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I guess I, I don't have, um... I, I think I agree with what Councilmember Garcia said. Um, I think in this case, Firefighters for Healing sounds like a great organization. I'm not um, terribly concerned about this specific incidence, but I, I would be curious to know. Um, I don't know that it needs to be a huge priority given that the demand is, is low as Jennifer Anderson was saying, um, but would be curious to know uh, if this is something that we could put a limit on um because I, I do think it it would get um I mean like like she said Jennifer said that um it, it's a different atmosphere being at a restaurant with with gambling and so I think if suddenly like all of our restaurants had that that would not be ideal but um I guess I'm not expecting that to happen so but um more more information would be helpful Thank you, Council Member Whalen. Council Member Supple. Um, I have no problem with the current proposal. And I do think if we're going to have a policy discussion, it should be when there's not a proposal on the table. So if we can come to reason in the future and we can discuss it just on the merits of the policy, I think it would be good to look at like do we want to have a cap and can we have a cap and so of that. So I would um, support no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hearing you well, uh, uh, Mary. Oh, can you, so I need to talk. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Speak a little. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Please. I've been having tech problems tonight. Um. 
So what I was saying was that I don't have an issue with the current proposal and it meets all of our guidelines. Um, I do think it would be good if staff could look at you know options of whether or not we can put a cap on and that kind of thing and that we make that decision when there's not a particular um proposal on the table so we're looking at it just from a pure policy standpoint so i think sometime in the future that would be a good thing to do but uh, as it currently stands this does fit our current policy does that answer your question no, I, I, yes, I, I think, yeah, I agree. I think, uh, you know, if, if we're going to vote on this, then, then we still need some more information before we go, you know, further into the future, just, just for our knowledge and, you know, it, it just, I think it's a good idea to any time that, that, like I said, you know, if we're going to set presidents or, or, or we're, how we're going to treat, you know, others that come forth. Thank you. Um, and, and I would concur with where the discussion is going in terms of, um, one, I would say that I am in support of this proposal tonight. And I appreciate um, Firefighters for Healing being here. Ron, thank you for being here and explaining um, the program a little more to us. And then I would also just add in that um, policy kind of review or analysis moving forward, if you could just include what kind of leverage or discretion we have to say yes or no. I know in some situations, um, if it fits the ordinance, you know, we, we obviously don't have any basis for denial versus is this something where we do have more discretion or not? Um, and then, and then that, um, part of limiting the establishments too. So I don't think I have any other questions, um, but I just wanted to share my perspective on both items. Mayor, that's certainly something I can look into further. Great, thank you. And Ron? Yeah, and real quick, I, I first I wanna thank you all very much. You've asked some very great questions. And in the future, I I mean, I grew up in Richfield where <laughs> and uh, my daughter and her husband just bought a house last fall there and brought their very first New resident to Richfield, home yesterday. I will say, uh, so it, it's it's a it's a special spot for me all the way around. And if I can be of assistance as a member of the board of firefighters for healing, campaign manager, um, coordinating with Maddie, I would be more than happy to do so. I many years in Maple Grove and pretty familiar there with the with gambling there. So um, certainly don't have all the answers, but I know a lot of the people that I can touch with. So if I can help, please feel free to call on us. Well, I have one more question. Yes, Council Member Mr. Yes. John, for Mr. Johnson. Have you had a hamburger at Sandy's yet? I, I absolutely. In fact, we I when we moved back to we, we moved back to Richfield though, probably 20 years ago before we moved to Maple Grove and lived there for 10 or 12 years. And Sandy's was a regular place for us even before Maddie bought it. So, um, mm -hmm. yes, one of my favorite places. I I will be servicing that spot myself. <laughs> Okay, well, you have to vouch for the food, you know, so, so <laughs> you want me to vote for it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you'll come down for bingo because it's really what he wants from a community service kind of thing. He wants to draw in the community very, very mm -hmm. well. He keeps harping on that, so. Okay. That's exciting. Any last comments or questions from council members? If not, if someone could make a motion, that'd be great. Council Member Supple, I move to adopt the resolution approving the lawful gambling premises permit application by Firefighters for Healing to conduct lawful gambling at Sandy's Tavern, 6612 Penn Avenue South. Council Member Whalen, second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Council Member Supple and seconded by Council Member Whalen. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take the roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez? Aye. Council Member Supple? Aye. Council Member Trotman? Council Member Garcia? Aye. Aye. Council Member Whalen? Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. The motion passes. Thank you so much for coming and visiting, and we look forward to playing bingo at Sandy Severs. Good. I look forward to seeing you all. Appreciate your help tonight, and you guys all stay safe. Thank you.
The next item is the city manager's report. City Manager Rodriguez. I'm so sorry, Mayor. I was having trouble unmuting, so I apologize. Um, I don't have a big report for tonight. Um, I just want to caution folks that next meeting on July 14th, we will have three public hearings um, and we will still be meeting virtually. So um, Kelly outlined our process for providing public comment and public hearings and also for, at the open forum. Um, but it's really helpful if you can contact our staff ahead of time to let us know if you're going to be emailing in comments or would like to call in and it it will be it will be difficult to uh, handle that. Um, we've never had that many public hearings in a meeting and an open forum. So just ask for folks patience. We will do our best. Um, I don't know if Blanca or Kelly want to add anything more on that. Thank you, City Manager Rodriguez. I just wanted to uh, also mention that because we only have one line um, and Kelly can review all that contact information, but we do currently only have one line that manages both the open forum and the public hearings. So there is um, there is a way to, to call in and you might be placed on a hold. There could be a potential chance that you're call gets dropped but we just want to make sure that everyone knows that we are we're trying our best and if you contact us ahead of time that helps us tremendously so we can plan appropriately and make sure that we have your contact information in case we do lose your call um, that night so i'll just let uh, senior administrative assistant kelly win review some of the contact information to call for both the open forum and the public hearings of July 14. Uh, so for the open forum and the public hearings for that July 14th meeting, it is like um, analyst Martinez Gavina stated, uh, one phone line that we will be manning. Um, the phone number for that will be 612-861-0000. So we will be taking <clears throat> calls for open forum first. Uh, you can also call ahead, leave me a message, speak with me, or um, send me an email. Uh, as I stated earlier in the meeting, again, that is K-W-Y-N-N at richfieldmn.gov. And my uh, office phone is 612-861-9711. Um, we will take the open forum first, then we will state our first public hearing when that comes time in the agenda. We will take those calls. We will then uh, have time to record it for the second public hearing, take those calls, and then record for the third public hearing and take those calls. So we may ask you when you call in what you are choosing to speak for. Um, and if you are choosing to speak for an item that we are not taking a call for, then we will ask you to call back. Um, if there are a large amount of people calling in, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it, uh, you may get dropped, um, just call back. Um, if we've got too many people on there, it may start to drop people, but it should be able to take quite a few callers. So we just ask for your patience. You know, Mayor, I wanted to, well, tell, well, Kelly was in Ankar, both there. I just wanted to say that, that I appreciate their working with me because I know I'm challenged when it comes down to technology. And, and I appreciate their patience and their, you know, and, and the time uh, for helping me out. And then I also wanted to congratulate, I know this is not really the issue, but I wanted to congratulate uh, uh, Blanca for for the nice spread she got in the Richfield Sun, promoting and talking about our census. So appreciate that. Thank you, Council Member Garcia. Any other questions or comments on the city manager's report portion of the agenda from council members? 
City Manager Rodriguez. Mayor, I do have more to report um, if there are further questions on the meeting on 714. I'll go ahead. Um, and we're, uh, if uh, Jennifer, our public health administrator, is still on the line, I'm, I'm going to give a brief update on what's going on with the virus. Um, happy to report that the local daily positive cases have been declining. Um, so that is good news. Um, we are we continue to try and keep up with the the governor's orders and his um, additional his administration's additional guidance. Um, we are gearing up to um, we're working with the sports and the associations to begin competitive play beginning on June 25th. We also need to make some um, some changes to our preparedness plans. There's some additional things they want us to cover in it and including ventilation and drop off and pick up for deliveries. Um, so we're working on that. Um, so I, I'll just pause there. I just I also wanted to briefly mention the PAC meeting that we had on the 494 35W quarter recently, but are there any questions about the virus and our mitigations? No, okay. And then just briefly, um, Director Asher gave you an update, but we had a very good meeting, the Policymaker Advisory Committee for the 35W and 494 quarter um, was, was very good. We were able to raise our concerns about the proposed Project A um, about and the overall implementation and uh, really grateful that our neighbors, our legislators and MnDOT heard our concerns about safety and mobility and equity uh, on the east side of the quarter. And we had strong support, and Mayor, you mentioned this during our work session, strong support from um, our, our neighbors, both Adina and Bloomington, as well as our Met Council Met Representative Molly Cummings and the Transportation Chair, um, Council Member Jeff Barber, um, Representative Howard, Senator Wicklin, and Commissioner Gattel. So I'm um, very grateful that they were able to support us and um, we had a great conversation and I feel confident that we are going to um, move ahead and have more consideration for equity for the first project to be funded with quarters of commerce for that quarter. And also very grateful to Mayor Regan Gonzalez and Council Member Troutman, they led the way in the discussion. And that is it for my report tonight. Thank you, City Manager Rodriguez. Any questions or comments from Council? Council members? No, I thought that was a I thought that was a good report. Thank you, Council Member Garcia. Um, Council Member I just wanted to echo the thank you for representing us. Um, Mayor Rachel Gonzalez and Council Member Troutman and all the staff and all of our um, public officials that are in our neighboring communities and different levels of government. So I think it's really important for our voice to be heard and I appreciate it, thank you. Absolutely, we provided a, a united, presented a united front for sure and it will absolutely have an outcome of a better project, I'm confident. I think we put something on folks' radar that they weren't maybe paying attention to um, and on such an important project in the most important quarter in the state that's we want to do better than that. So thank you to the staff and all the policymakers that helped um, jump on the bandwagon for that. The next item is claims and payroll that goes to Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Well, we we we've got to we've got to play pay our staff, and if anybody has a claims issue, then we've got to take care of that too. So therefore, I will move claims and payroll. Councilmember Whalen, second. Thank you. Claims and payroll has been moved by Councilmember Garcia and seconded by Councilmember Whalen. Analyst Martinez Gavinia, could you please take roll call vote? Mayor Reagan Gonzalez. Aye. Councilmember Sop. Aye. Councilmember Troutman. Aye. Councilmember Whalen. Aye. We have four ayes. Thank you. Claims and payrolls has been approved. Um, we our last item is hats off to hometown hits. I'll start with Councilmember Whalen. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, first off, uh, I meant to mention this when we were approving the minutes, but wanted to um, let anyone know who's curious about, um, we, we had our preliminary budget and priority setting session. That was one of the sets of minutes we approved. So if you're curious about um, what's kind of on the horizon for next year, what we're prioritizing, um, check out the, the summary from June 10th. Um, and then wanted to uh, just highlight the, the people on our uh, resident commissions know that we've started meeting again with all of them. There'd been a, a few months off uh, with COVID and figuring out how to get meetings going again. But um, I've sat in now on a couple planning commission meetings, couple sustainability ones. I know the other council members are liaisons to others, but uh, to our residents who aren't on them, but are curious what's going on, uh, you can tune into those as well through um, through live stream and, and keep up or reach out to to the um, to to us on council or the commission members uh, if you're curious to hear what's going on. Um, but especially, it's been fun being on the sustainability commission. Um, that was only their their second meeting since uh, it's been created. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Uh, we were talking about a climate climate action plan for the year. Um, and then the last thing I'll mention is just an ongoing reminder. A lot of people um, I've talked to haven't heard yet, but the um, our recreation programming uh, has moved virtually, and there's something literally every day um, that you can go and access the stuff that um, that's the videos, the activities that have been happening. Um, some of them are events at our parks. Um, that you do kind of on your own time. So really would encourage, um, especially any families who are wondering kind of how do we fill our time this summer? Um, there's a lot of wonderful things coming out of the rec department. Thank you, council member Whalen. Council member- Mayor, could I, could I excuse myself from the rest of the meeting? Absolutely. Thank you for joining us, council member Garcia. Thank you. You know, when you've got puppies, they, they, you know, you, you got to take care of them. So that's what I'm going to do now. <laughs> take them outside. All right. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very Garcia. much. Appreciate it. Good, good job. Bye-bye. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Council Member Thank Shelley. you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm glad that um, Jennifer Anderson is still on the line because I wanted to do a shout out to her for all the work she's done as a community health administrator. And she's puts out a lot of information out to the community and also to the council. And lately she's been reminding us that we still need to be diligent in preventing the spread of COVID. And some of those reminders she put out were that you should stay home when you're sick, you should keep washing your hands, you should cover your cough, keep practicing social distancing and keep wearing masks. And also to Jamie, I don't know if it's on the website, but for sure on the city Facebook page, they posted four different sites that you can get tested today and tomorrow. So people can sign up to go to get tested. It's nearby in Minneapolis. So please keep those things in mind. And again, thank you so much to the staff and Jennifer Anderson for all you do to help keep us safe from COVID. Um, and then the second thing to add on to what Council Member Whalen said about the Recreation Department, um, in the past, we've always had the uh, urban wildland race to support Wood Lake Nature Center. So this year, the staff got creative and to keep us safe, but also to continue to support Wood Lake Nature Center, the 2020 urban wildland is going to be a virtual race. And so there's going to be four different events that people can do. They can do the half marathon, they can do a 10 mile. They can do a 10K or they can do a 5K. And you end up submitting your times between July 25th and August 1st. So if, if you're listening to this and you'd like to sign up for that virtual race, you go to urbanwildland.com and it has all the registration you can use. So I'm hoping we get a great attendance for that because um, the Urban Wildland helps um, promote Wood Lake Nature Center and also helps Maybe for programming so that our youth from around the area can come and go to Wood Lake Nature Center for more for learning about nature. So thank you. 
Thank you, Council Member Supple. Um, I have a couple updates just to let people know that the state's small business assistance program is now available on the DEED website. Um, our city staff will be pushing that information out through various city channels, but please, um, if you are a small business in Richfield or, or anywhere in the state, the state funds are now, um, a, you're able to apply now for those funds. So please spread the word to our small businesses. We wanna make sure that we keep as many businesses as possible through this pandemic. And then I believe once those um, funds are out the door, then Hennepin County will release their small business assistance, but you cannot um, receive both. So there'll be another wave of funding through the county, which will come after the state funds. So we'll be sharing that information in our communication channels as well. And then I just wanna say again, I know we've said, said this before, but congratulations to our Richfield senior graduates. It was great to be a part of the um, there was a little parade of our Richfield graduates through the Augsburg Park last week, and it was just a, a different experience, but it's so great to see how the community is still finding so many ways to come together and build community. Um, so congrats to our grads. I know it probably wasn't exactly what you had hoped for, but it sure is memorable. And I know that everyone will say, remember when we graduated, we were going through this global pandemic. Um, and then lastly, I just want to remind people, we have so many amazing organizations in our city and community. Right now, people want to get engaged. People want to change, make change. People want to um, grow community. They want things to be more equitable. And that really starts with every single person making that commitment as individuals, as a family, and finding ways that they can um, make that actionable. So please remember all the great organizations that we have in Richfield doing great work and a couple um, groups that I was just either talking to recently or had the pleasure of being on their on their WebEx calls were the League of Women Voters. Men and women can be a part of the league um, and we're always looking for new members. We're looking for leadership and I will tell you um, the women who are in the League of Women Voters are really um, some of the trailblazers for our city and community and they've been great mentors and, and have really done a great job of passing the baton. So we wanna continue growing that momentum through the league. And then also the Richfield Foundation, which provides support and assistance to nonprofits and in, in efforts across the whole city. Um, and they also do the annual wine tasting events. So two great organizations that are currently looking for additional members please consider um, joining a group to make change here in our own city. So with that, um, seeing that this is our last item, I will adjourn our meeting. Thank you everyone and have a great night.